Happy full moon. We have the Sagittarius and Scorpio full moon coming up in the next few days. It is going to be on June 3rd or 4th, depending on your time zone. So either late Saturday night or early Sunday night, depending on where you are in the world. And this full moon is really special because it's actually in alignment with the greater tractor. So within astrology, we also have to think about the other galaxies out there. It's not just thinking about the immediate planets in our solar system, but what is beyond our solar system because we are affected by all of the cosmic bodies around the Milky Way galaxy. So the great attractor is a galaxy of clusters that basically forms like a vacuum of energy that just sucks everything towards it. Similar concept to a black hole. And the full moon that's coming up this weekend is going to be in alignment with this great attractor. So the great attractor holds a hundred thousand galaxies within a short, dense amount of space. And because of all of that um, mass, it creates a big gravitational field where, where it pulls everything towards it. And so maybe you've been noticing this maybe coming up in your dreams or you've been having a sense of like a vacuum. I first got this sense when I was writing up the post for the full moon, I was doing the energy update and I wanted to type like a vacuum like energy, but it just sounded so silly. Um, and when I actually ended up looking at what is this greater tractor um, in science, right? They described it that like it's a vortex that pulls um, energies towards it and other celestial bodies towards it. So our Milky Way galaxy is part of it um, and it's being pulled closer to it um, in terms of its core. So it's really fascinating that not just that this is the last full moon before the solstice. The solstice is on June 20, 21st, I believe. And that's the start of summer. It's the start of winter, depending on where you are in the Northern or Southern hemisphere. And that's a whole new season. It's sort of like a new soul shift. Every single full moon, new moon, solstice equinox is sort of like a stream, a current of energy. So if you think about the ocean, the ocean is filled with different currents. And you may have heard of El Niño, La Niña. These are tropical storms that tend to happen because of the currents around the planet's oceans. So these currents flow in a particular way. And if you're a sailor, then obviously you're going to pay attention to the currents, right? Because you don't want to go against the current because that's just going to be take up so much effort, so much energy. Um, and more time. And it's similar to us working with new moons, full moons, equinox and solstice. We have to work with this energy in order for us to move with the flow of things. So an uh, easier way and more common way for us to understand this is um, we all have um, we, we've all driven in a car at some point, right? Or been a passenger. And you're never gonna try to go the opposite way of of the traffic. Well, unless you are <laughs> very bold and um, you're into that adventurous thing, but you always tend to go and flow with with the with the traffic, right? So that's what these um, luminations, these lunar cycles and solar cycles helps us to do. It helps us to find stability. It helps us to find order within the changing patterns, not just here on planet Earth, not just within our solar system, but within our galaxy, because our galaxy is always spinning. Everything is spinning. Um, right now, all the little atoms in your finger are spinning, but we can't see it because it's way too minute. Um, but if we were to get a really powerful microscope that could look at the atoms in your fingers, you would see that they're actually just spinning um, balls of energy, basically protons and electrons. And so everything is always spinning, even the moon around the earth, the, the moon is constantly circling us, right? The earth is constantly circling around the sun. 
the galaxy is constantly circling. And so everything is in this constant state of flow. And the more that we can get attuned to the lunar cycles, the solar cycles, the galaxy cycles, the cosmic cycles, then we can find more harmony within our life transitions. Because whether we like it or not, we are inherently connected to nature and we're inherently connected to the cosmos. That's one of the most beautiful things about us being humans, right? That we're like this beautiful um, merge between the celestial and the terrestrial. So how are you feeling this full moon? Let me know in the comments. Um, this full moon is uh, sort of like uh, thinking about this vacuum theme, right? Of the great attractor. Um, this full moon is an opportunity for us to suck away all of the dust, the confusion, maybe the stagnation that we have been feeling since the eclipse. So the eclipse on, on the 5-5 portal was insane, right? <laughs> like, I don't know about you, but I had an eclipse hangover for like two weeks. And I'm only getting out of this eclipse hangover now, like even still, like still working my way through it. Um, but I'm curious about how you have been feeling the energy um, since the 5-5 five, five portal, since the 5-5 five, five eclipse, how has it felt for you? Um, have you noticed that your, your life has accelerated, things have slowed down for you, or maybe things have been a little bit more difficult, there has been more friction in your life? Let me know. I would love to know how you're specifically feeling this energy. Um, I'm curious because I know we all feel it in different ways, and especially with the great attractor right now. Um, what's so fascinating about this great attractor is that it's it's so far away. I I I, I can't remember exactly how many billions of light years away it is, but it's so far away. But we could feel its energies. So right now, the great attractor starting to come into alignment with our Earth, and. I could not sleep the past two nights and the people on my team have also been having extremely vivid dreams or they haven't been feeling well or their, their sleep has gone off. So that's how you know we are affected by these very far away cosmic bodies even though they may not be inherently within our galaxy, within our solar system astrologically it still affects us energetically it affects us right so i think it's important when we think about astrology to think about um the cosmos as a whole and not just within our solar system itself so yeah let me know in the comments um well, how has the energy felt like for you um vivid dreams with positive vibes yes that's really awesome that you're having that um so the full moon like I said, it's in Sagittarius within tropical astrology and Scorpio within sidereal astrology. And this full moon, because it's the last full moon before we start a new season with the solstice in the middle of June, this is a really important full moon for you to work with, especially if you've been feeling some of that sluggishness, maybe some of the confusion that came with the eclipse um, portal. Because that eclipse was really a doozy. Like um, It was a lot, right? It is a lot to process at the soul level. It's a lot of changes that it pushed us through. And so some of us are kicking and fighting through our transformation or some of us may be confused in our transformation right or for some of us the transformation may be taking longer than it should because of some other reason but this rebirth process that we're moving through um, this full moon is an opportunity for us to make the final phases of this rebirth process more smooth so work with this full moon whether you know it feels more of like a scorpio water energy or it feels more of a fiery sagittarius energy for you connect with um with these elements with the themes that resonate with you right because uh we have to understand that with cosmic energy with astrological energy 
it's not just like a blanket fits all of us uh, because we're all we all have different birth charts we're all in different areas of our journey right there's so many things that go into it so you really have to tune into the energies directly to see how they feel for you specifically so um work with this full moon you know to like and the greater in the greater tractor energy i just want to call it the great vacuum energy because it literally just feels like a vacuum of energy just sucking up everything but work with that energy to suck up um any of those uh stagnant energies that have been lingering in your life um to suck up any confusion to suck up the dust from the storm that was the eclipse right maybe you've been a little bit foggy maybe you've been a little bit confused or misguided about like where what is your north star what is your priority what are your footsteps moving forward in your journey and work with this great attractor to remove that confusion to remove those doubts um, and to remove anything that is preventing you from going through your rebirth process so that when we get to the solstice in mid-june like you're ready and you're grounded and you're clear and you're able to work with that energy portal um so let me read the chat real quick um money stress relationships with elements of conflict have been challenging but it seems everything is coming right on time and conflict remains potential it's been amazing and reaffirming that's so wonderful that like you weaved it like that that's really interesting because in the last few days in my meditations usually the energy flows like this but it's been flowing sideways which also makes me realize that we are in gemini season so happy birthday to all you gemini's and happy early birthday to all you cancers out there all you cancer alchemists and with gemini when we like just look at the symbology right it's the twins it's the two sides um, a lot of people think about it as two-faced but that's a misinterpretation what it means it means two perspectives so you have two eyes right you have two hemispheres of your brain you don't just have one giant brain you have two hemispheres of your brain one which is more intuitive creative and the other one is more logical analytical linear and so you need both sides in order for you to uh, function at your most optimal, right? To be in that creative flow state, to actually work on the creativeness and manifest that. And so uh, I just thought, I just think it's really fascinating how everything is slowly trying to coming together because it's been a lot of energy that we've been moving through and I've been moving through a lot of energy like it's been really crazy but um I've been working with goddess Hathor recently the Egyptian goddess of harmony joy love motherhood music and she has been extremely helpful and wise she was one of the biggest oracles back um during her time so it's just been a really blessing to have that type of mentor um I am releasing and grounding from all the confusion that came into my life. Balance. Yes, balance is really important. And balance is always going to look different. Um, a yoga teacher once said that in a class and I was like, whoa, that's so fascinating. That like balance right now will look in a specific way, but in two months it may look completely different. So be open to that concept that balance will always be changing. Learning to drop old thought top thought patterns like a hot stone <laughs> i love that um i love that example we must believe that the universe is our bff what we think and project means so much a hundred percent in bet especially right now um with a lot of people think the eclipse is over but the eclipse is not over <laughs> uh, uh the eclipse was so powerful and we're going to continue to feel its effects not just six months from now, but even a year from now. And so with the fact that this eclipse energy is still active, we also have the great attractor energy and we have the sol solstice coming up. Um, the, all of this amplifies manifestation. So yes, we're always creating, but especially right now, manifesting energy is heightened. So be extra mindful of what you are thinking, what you are saying, what you are feeling because it will definitely be amplified. Yeah, uh, 
I guess you all have been having a smooth journey then since the eclipse because I don't see many comments about how you've been feeling since the 5 5 portal and eclipse, which is awesome and a great sign that you have been evolving. So, snaps for you, good job. It's a lot of evolution we've been making in these past few years. It's honestly kind of mind-blowing how much um, we've evolved since 2012, 2020, and by 2028, because time works in cycles of eight. And, well, with there's like different time cycles in different cultures, but eight is one of the uh, main time cycles. So it's like 2012, 2020, 2028 are gonna be big um, years of cycles, beginnings and endings. And so it'll be fascinating to see how we are going to be in just five years from now. It's gonna be a whole new world, a whole new version of you. So it's really important for you to like sometimes just take a moment to just sit down um, and journal. You know, I have my journal next to me, but it's really important for you to just like write some bullet points down um, at least during um, a full moon, a new moon, or a solstice and equinox to just look at what happened in that season of your life because a lot of these patterns will show up later. Uh, so it's, it's super helpful. Everything will just continuously repeat itself unless we become aware of it and, tr and alchemize it. I actually had a lot of old trauma come up and went through a deep depression. Um, and how are you feeling now? Are you still feeling that depression still strong or like you feel like you're moving out of it? Um, yes, suicide was a big theme and is a big theme right now in the collective consciousness. Unfortunately, um, I believe it was last week yeah, last week in the Alchemy Academy, a few of us were dreaming about people committing suicide. And, um, you know, unfortunately now suicide rates are just keep going, coming, going up and up. They're absolutely insane. So remember to look out for your friends, your loved ones. I know people look really happy on social media and when they're out and about, but, you know, check in with them, ask them how they're really feeling because you never know how you just listening to someone can literally transmute the energy for them right like that's why we're here we're here to alchemize the energy and little things can make a big difference do not doubt your ability to care for someone and its ability to heal i've been feeling connected to myself having dreams that merge and connect to life and opening myself to be remembrance of truth and connection to source love that is so beautiful i really love that how do you explain ear ringing? It's a lot these last few days. Um, yeah, I think the ear ringing is because of the great attractor, but um, one of the things about this great attractor, uh, so if, you're, if, you're, if you join late, basically the great attractor is this concentration of 100,000 galaxies. So the universe is really vast and expanding and constantly expanding. But the great attractor is basically like a magnet or a black hole that pulls stars, comets, galaxies towards it. So it's a bunch of galaxies in a small amount of space that sucks everything together. So when you think about this energetically, that is a lot of energy, right? Like think about a galaxy. Our galaxy has all these many planets, etc., etc., and if you put all these galaxies together, that is a lot of consciousness, and that's a lot of energy, a lot of protons, electrons, neutrons, and this heightened energy is now being channeled into Earth because Earth is coming into alignment with the Great Attractor, which means that this heightened cosmic energy cosmic waves i mean this is science you can look if you look online if you can research cosmic waves cosmic radiation there are graphs that show that amount of cosmic radiation and um right now the amount of cosmic energy is heightened 
which means that the cosmic DNA within you is also going to start to be awakened. So I don't have a good I don't have a good like metaphor that I can explain this with, but it's basically like the radio signal is just right because it's a bunch of energy, cosmic energy stream concentrated coming heading towards Earth and your psychic senses because this is heightened there's more cosmic energy now more than usually your psychic senses are going to be able to pick up on that more easily because there's a heightened of this cosmic energy does that make sense let me know in the comments um if you have any other questions about that but yeah our psychic abilities are basically going to be um extremely heightened during this full moon on june 3rd and 4th so it's a great time for you to connect within right because all the answers are within and everyone who you're seeing on instagram on youtube on social media is just trying to they're just we're just here reminding you of everything you already know and so the more that you can connect with your psychic intuitive abilities however you want to label them um the more you will be aligned to your truth because then your truth is not being filtered through me it's not being filtered through other people but rather you're accessing your truth directly um from source within right we're all source but then you get it from source within yourself i journal to do shadow work and release blocks that's so cool that's really awesome that's a great practice to have I'm feeling so much better. I am strongly. I came out of it, but it was super challenging. Oh, that's so great that you moved out of that space. It can definitely be difficult for sure, but hope you're being extra gentle with yourself. Depression, depression's a lot. And like I mentioned earlier, you know, with the suicide rates increasing, but also in the collective consciousness, suicide um, is like a big part of the subconscious. For some people, they're not even conscious of it. And so as empaths, we can pick up on that. And so we're like absorbing some of that depressive energy to try to transmute it. So just remember to be extra gentle with yourself if you are moving through that. I was feeling depressed last month and super anxious, but I just, um, I just tied it out of it and rode the wave until it passed. Yes, exactly, like allow it to move through you. That's, that's like, that's also really wonderful, you know, cause then the more attached we get to our emotions, the less we allow them to flow. But the word emotion is literally energy emotion, so you have to let it flow. So that's awesome that you did that. Man, you all are so wise. I was triggered on my birthday, yeah. My dad is suicidal and he keeps asking me to end his life. I'm so sorry that that's a lot to deal with. That is a lot to deal with. Um, I think um, like sending him love, um, maybe not like you can tell him obviously how much you love him and how much you mean to him. Um, but me and Honey are started to do a 21 day gratitude practice where every day um, before going to bed, like we say three things that we're grateful for and every night it changes. So maybe if you can get your dad to be grateful, I mean, maybe, you know, just get him his favorite candy or you um, get him a, his favorite drink and you guys can enjoy those little things. But if you get him to start being conscious of little things that he can be grateful for, maybe like watching a funny movie or something like this, um, it will start to trigger new neurons in his brain because depression comes from chemical reactions in your body. And so if you can change those chemical reactions and, in, and instead create a flow of positive chemical uh, chemicals, then it will help to trigger his state, right? Because you have to understand we're sort of a machine and this machine is constantly creating data and it's creating fluids and electrical charges and all of this. So you have to work with the body um, to help the mind and the, the heart. Let me see. Is, is there a relation to the photon belt? I mean, we're currently passing through the photon belt right now, yes. 
We haven't passed through the photon belt, I believe, in 11,000 to 13,000 years. So that's like part of another big cycle. You know, it's not a, you're talking, the photon cycle is this macro cycle, 11 to 13,000 years. We're talking about lunar cycles. We're talking about annual cycles, you know? So there's so many different time cycles that we have to consider. And when you start to explore different um, beliefs, different cosmologies around the world, different cultures, their teachings, the elders that pass down the information, there's so many different calendar systems, right? It's not just the Mayan calendar, it's not just the lunar calendar, the Celtic calendar, there's like so many of them. And when you start to observe them, like for example, the, the Chinese calendar, uh, the metaphysical Chinese calendar, I believe, um, has uh, time cycles in terms of 19 years. The Celtic cycle, I believe, is 11 years, you know, and the Mayan, I believe, is 13 years. So it's really fascinating to see how these cycles match up. I wish I, like, I wish I could, um, do like a PhD in, in recording time. Um, but there are a lot of timekeepers out there. Let me know in the chat or in the comments if you know of a good timekeeper, because that's its own, like, field to study in. Um, thank you made a lot of sense okay good I'm glad it made a lot of sense it's hard to explain some of these concepts because there's like the science aspect and then there's the spiritual aspect and I'm trying to like bring them together and I don't know sometimes if it makes sense or not so I'm glad it translated um, I am more anxious around the full moon that's very common yeah, that is a very common thing. It's common to be more anxious, more overwhelmed, the sleeping patterns changing, emotional patterns changing. That's very common. And it's good that you're aware of that. And the first thing is awareness. And then the second, st second part is like, okay, I'm aware. Now what? Maybe now you spend more time meditating. Maybe now you spend less time on your phone. Maybe now you eat food that makes you less anxious. You know, so now that we have that awareness, now we have the power of choice to, to use our free will to work with this in a more empowering way. But yeah, um, I just wanted to see how you guys were doing after the eclipse craziness. And um, one more question before I go, I wanna know, have your sleeping patterns been affected in the last like three days or so, or any specific unique changes that have been present in the last two to two, three days um either emotionally spiritually energetically mentally i have been blessed to meet and be studying with a mayan sacred calendar timekeeper it has been special delving special delving in for me happy to connect more on this that's so awesome it's so wonderful have you studied quantum physics is the study of energy and how it affects us quantum physics is actually yeah super fascinating yes i've studied it um oh much love namibia namibia great been getting prophecy you should share some of those prophecies yeah you're getting them for a reason um, when you feel called to it definitely share yes I keep walk waking up at night and feeling extremely anxious I didn't know why but you have put me at ease oh good I'm glad that this was helpful that came true strong messages huge sleep disruption Although tired, also fe feeling very charged and energy channeling through me very strong, a deeper trust. Yes, that's so awesome. Yeah, and you know that like goes right into to alignment with what we were talking about with a greater tractor, this like area of the universe that has a heightened cosmic energy that's beaming towards Earth right now. So the knowingness is going to be stronger like the gut feelings is going to be stronger, the intuition, the messages, the dreams are going to be more clear over these next few days. So pay attention. Um, it's cool to talk about these things, right? 
but it's also very important to put them into practice in our lives and to become more aware of them not just to like observe we're not watching tv but rather we are the actors in this play and so have fun with this energy it's really it, it can be really intense right like it's a lot of cosmic energy is very fast moving because there's cosmic particles are much lighter and less dense than the particles that we have within our earth and so it can cause a little bit more anxiety overwhelmingness so definitely grounding will be really important this it's so funny because one of the things that frustrates me about <laughs> speaking about these co concepts is that i i i tried to ex explain how um working with your root chakra is counterintuitively you would think oh if i'm connected with my root chakra then i'm not going to open up my third eye and my psychic abilities and my pineal gland and all of this right but actually the more that you connect with your root chakra and ground the easier it is for the um, cosmic energy cosmic information to flow into your body and actually stay here long enough for you to be able to process it through your cells through your DNA and to integrate it. Uh, it's funny because I made a reel about that and like no one liked it. <laughs> no one liked it. Everyone just wants to know like, how do I open my third eye and all this? But it's actually, you know, by, by grounding. So grounding will be super helpful um, and definitely connect with your intuition because it's gonna be heightened at this, um, at this full moon. Um, can you guide the process of prophetic dream premonitions because it's not always positive? Yeah, it's a big responsibility, right? Like being an oracle. Um, and it's really fascinating that you're talking about this because last night um, I woke up at 421, which is the day of my, my, my birth on this earth. And I was connecting with goddess Hathor, who I was explaining earlier was like one of the, or the the greatest oracles of her time. She was actually goddess Isis, goddess Osset's um, mentor, you know, and goddess Hathor had the ability to astral project, um, not just astral project, but she could literally bring different versions of herself from parallel lives to different places. So she could connect with parallel lives like this. Um, and she had such an advanced understanding of energy when it comes to time and space and that gave her the advanced um, not just healing abilities but traveling abilities um, because we have to understand that a lot of the beings here on earth in hinduism christianity islam judaism a lot of the you know angels and saints and, and deities that a lot of these religions worship they are actually born in other star systems. That's why they're painted as blue a lot of the time, right? Um, because they, they have blue skin because they don't uh, breathe oxygen and they don't have as much oxygen as we do here on Earth. That's why our skin color is different. And so um, a lot of these very spiritually evolved beings are actually from other star systems. Goddess Hathor being one of them. And Goddess Hathor, um, last night, she was telling me, uh, she said, Oracle of the Soul. So she was an Oracle of the Soul. And uh, she was teaching Goddess Isis, she was her mentor, she was teaching her how to be an Oracle. So Isis, Goddess Isis, Goddess Alset, as you all know, like she protected the pharaohs and this and that, but she was also the leader of Kemet, the leader of ancient Egypt. And that's a lot of responsibility, right? But she also had to foresee what things were gonna come. Like if there was a plague, for example, then she would have to tell the farmers so that they could prepare so that the people of Kemet of Egypt could have, um, could withstand that famine and et cetera, et cetera. So it's a lot of power and it's also a lot of responsibility. And so um, my biggest advice is like to work with a mentor right, to work with a mentor because it can be hard to juggle like the prophetic dreams that you're talking about, especially when they're not positive. I've seen some things that are really scary and I don't share them um, because 
partly like I don't want to manifest that timeline. Um, also, it's a potential timeline, you know, because um, we the timelines are always shifting. Timelines are always shifting because there's so many different choice points um, that everyone's taking that the collective, the collective unconscious, right? There's so many factors to it. Um, but I, from my experience, working with a mentor has been um, game changing. And that's what I would recommend. Like, personally, I love having a physical earth mentor and my spirit guides because they're like mentors as well. But the earth ones help me to like apply it like practically to like being a modern human and living in this 3D life. Um, so that's what I would recommend, like connect with your guides, connect with your ancestors um, and find a mentor that resonates with you. Um, on that note, the Alchemy Academy is gonna open up for enrollment on the solstice in mid-June, so I'm super excited. Um, we haven't opened enrollment um, in a while. So um, the Alchemy Academy is basically um, an academy where you learn how to alchemize energy internally, so the shadow work, how to heal yourself internally, how to master your mind and your emotions internally, and after you learn to do that, you start to learn to master external energy, so practicing high magic, how the Egyptians would turn rocks into gold, they used alchemy to do that. But before we can, you know, start creating cool stuff out there, like our students know how to make things invisible. This one student, she has constantly been um, sharing on our group that um, she is, she's been traveling for a year now and all the time she gets a full row of seats to herself because she makes them invisible, <laughs> you know? So like, it's cool and it's cool to do, be able to do these things, but before we can do that, we first have to master the internal, the mental and emotional. So I'm excited um, that we're gonna be open up opening up the academy um, for enrollment um, during the solstice so that's keep an eye out for that for more details um, I'm super excited for that and let me read the chat uh, we're also hosting a full moon ceremony and meditation with goddess Hathor um, if you're interested in learning more about her you can click the link in my bio I wrote um, some information about her and the collective as well, um, the Hathor collective, uh, because um, she's all, like the when I was connecting with her, it wasn't just her that came in, but it was the collective of uh, the Hathors. So in our Fumu meditation, it's not like we're just connecting with the Hathor, but we're connecting with the Hathors. So I'm excited for that. That's gonna be fun, um, and. Yeah, if I don't see you at our full moon ceremony and meditation, then I am wishing you a graceful full moon. Remember to ground, um, to connect with your intuition because our intuition is going to be so heightened at this full moon. Drink extra water, um, work with your crystals to help you to find clarity and to ground to be able to anchor the huge amount of cosmic energy and flow that's coming into our planet. And I'm wishing you um, a wonderful full moon. Much love, everyone. Take care.